rappers, huh? But you can't step with us. Niggas swear they certified steppers, but don't step with us. Oh, you be with them steppers, huh? But you can't step with us. Niggas swear they certified steppers, but don't step with us. Oh, you be with them. Grind a home, big dog. Man, forget Brittany Grind. What's the celebration, man? I really want to get your opinion on that. John, zoom, zoom in on me. Jumping right in. Zoom in on me, John. They should have freed the real, the real BG, baby gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Cash money is the army, baby in the navy, baby in the tidal army, putting gray. <laughs> That's what they should have did. Get me home, man. So, all right. So you don't think that that you don't think that was a good move? Hell no. So for you, uh, art, for international arms dealer, man. Man, before nah. for a big manly WNBA player. <laughs> I don't, don't want to laugh at the situation, but it's like your commentary funny. First of all, mm. man, it's like. Now I'm glad I'm, I'm I'm glad she home. Right, it, 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 but I get, but I also like your shit ain't miss. You ain't missing the mark in terms of like perspective. Yeah, like when you think about perspective, it's like I now, I hope we got a backup plan because like. Like when I started digging into the whole situation, like you realize, like I, 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 I'm super happy she home. So welcome home, Brittany Griner, for sure, first and foremost, right? Mm. But then, like you start wondering, like, is the safety of the general public, if the, is, is that, is that worth, you know, Brittany Griner right now? Yeah. Because that's really that's really the argument, right? Mm. Is that it, well, honestly, I ain't gonna say it's the word Brittany Griner. Is it worth your political agenda? Yeah. Let's talk that because that's really how I look at it, how mm. most people are looking at it. If you do, you know, if you look at the research, it's like there's an election coming up in in uh, basically a year now because mm. we at the end of 2022, mm. right? And you know, you gonna put you want to put that on your resume? I don't think so. You, you so you think that's gonna help Biden? Man, that's gonna help the Democratic Party because, because listen, listen what happened. Br Brittany Griner is part of the LGBTQ community. Mm. Votes there. Yeah, she's a part of. She's a woman, mm. and then a black woman at that. Votes there. Mm. Then you know you got this whole liberal movement, right? Where it's all conservative and this type of thing, and she's she's a minority. So it's like like you tapping into the, like the the primary three to four things that like the Democratic Party uses to get their votes on. But let me ask you so, who- Yes, I think that there's a political agenda that exists for Let sure. me ask you, what, what race votes, uh, votes the most? I mean, it was disparities. White people are the most people on this country. And you think, and you think white people care about Brittany Griner? Do you, know, you, do you know how big LGBTQ is? So let me tell you something, <laughs> just to get your point. Mm. You're right. I think, I think the whole political war is a left white versus left right. Mm. If you, I mean, I'm sorry, left right versus a, a right white mm. right so i think at the top is all white people yeah but at the end of the day some white people are gonna be like yo she's a part of my lgbt community mm. and i but i may not give a fuck about britney grinder but i give a fuck about this agenda yeah and there's people who give a fuck about britney grinder who's a part of this agenda i think so yes i think it's all connected i think it made Biden look soft and he gonna he gonna regret doing that shit. You, so you talking about getting britney grinder so who mm. you know so you are you familiar with there's a there's a there's a marine that's locked up yeah yeah so there's been a push saying that that's who they should have got. Really, yeah. Do you think that that's more of an even swap? Hell yeah. I still, but I still. My follow, I don't say it was even though. My follow up question is: yes. Does does it does it make more noise? Because at the end of the day, you a marine and you in Russia territory doing some shit in a country for an agenda of a U.S. where we don't they don't see eye to eye with us. Yeah. That capture makes total sense to me. Mm. Brittany Griner absolutely broke the law, mm. right? Not, not, not even questioning that part. However, when you talk about her sentencing for what the what she got sentenced for, mm. that makes way way more here. Like, like right. my nigga, dude, if I smoke weed, yeah, and we talking about a cartridge, bro, <laughs> a THC but, cartridge for a pen, my nigga, that's. Yeah. I guarantee, I guarantee he did the he did the Brittany Grotto instead of the Marine because Brittany Grotto is gonna make headlines yeah, more exactly. than the damn Marine. Hence the reason why I say it's it's more of a political agenda than it is anything else. Mm. Like I, I started reading into it, and when I first saw that she was released, I clapped. I'm like, mm. God damn, time yeah. home, right? Realized she been gone nine, eight, nine, ten months, something like that. Mm. Beginning of this year, she was gone. I think like February, so about ten months, nine, ten months. So then you started realizing, like, oh, this this prison swap was definitely. Like Russia absolutely was using Brittany Griner to get their people home, mm. 
And then you think you think about who the fuck they nigga they bought baby rainbow on. Yeah. This nigga's on oh, this nigga make bombs from scratch. No, no, when that nigga do some terroristic <laughs> shit to the US, they can play all, this all nigga fingers make bombs point, from scratch, Jeremy. All fingers point to Biden. That man. bitch can blow up the that bitch will blow up this building in a matter of minutes. You never seen that movie with uh Nicolas Cage, the arms dealer movie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So basically that's who the fuck we got back on the streets yeah. in Russia. For a WNBA player that nobody watch. <laughs> six nine, six nine could barely dunk. <laughs> <laughs> bro, he, hey, bro, don't be bashing me. <laughs> but now, you know what made me, what it made me think about though is like, how do like, how do you come home, home, quotation mm. marks, right? Mm. After, a life experience like that. Like basketball, the last thing I'm talking about. And yeah. that's that's probably gonna be the thing that she try to run through first to like suppress shit and and and, and kind of get life as back to normal as possible. Mm. But I guarantee you when she's sleeping at night, bro, there's so much shit playing in her head that she didn't see. Like, I can only imagine what she seen in them goddamn Russian prisons. Yeah, but do you think they actually had her in Russian prisons or they were just saying it? They might've had that motherfucker in a nah, damn she was locked up, vacation man. home somewhere. Nah, I think she was locked up. Somewhere. Yeah, she might've been, I don't she know. She walking in a bit through chains and shit like- Nigga, I, every prison got to walk with some goddamn chains on, <laughs> So you nigga. think she went all the way to Russia and they made shit sweet like, they, uh, <laughs> hey, 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 this little cartridge. Cause she, cause she played ball for Russia, didn't she? That don't mean shit. But oh man, I'm talking about for the for the public eye, they had to make it look like they was treating an American like shit. Yeah. And if, if she played basketball for us, they probably was treating it like a queen on <laughs> behind closed doors. <laughs> John, this nigga think Brittany Grinder was just hooping out there. Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga think Brittany was out there getting buckets under the radar. And be like, listen, you can do what you want in this country, but bitch, you ain't flying back. Yeah, they can say we, can say, we did all this shit just to get, get our nigga out. You ain't getting your phones. Yeah. So basically you saying she had all the amenities, they just provoked her. Hey, hey her that's- Worldwide access. Them boys, the, the, oh. the best finesse self if they if that's what they came up with nigga I ain't gonna lie that is not what my mind was bro. my mind was that I, I, I foreseen Brittany Griner going through like some like I, I google like Russian prison conditions and shit bro and if mm. you just if you just do a simple google search bro that shit look terrible yeah. and if she was in that mm. man, I, I guarantee you she carrying some trauma with her right now mm. so like for me I don't even think she's gonna be the dominant Brittany Griner that we known it'll be for a while. One, because it's rust. Like when you ain't played ball in so long, you gotta get your touch back. Mm. But then two, like sports like that, when you at that highest level, it, it requires you to be locked in. And I just, I, I wonder how hard it's gonna be for her to lock to lock in when, you know, when it's like, damn, y'all really held me for all this time and I had to spend nine months in jail. And then like you come back and like, I guarantee you she got some people who who was silent on her ass? Who she thought might have might have been there for her? You said you said dominant. Did you know the top high school basketball player could be in, any WNBA basketball player? We, we, I'm talking about. <laughs> women, <bro>. we, <laughs> I ain't comparing. <laughs> I saw that yesterday. <laughs> this nigga hate the WNBA. <laughs> I ain't talking about that. I agree. Yeah, yeah. That's why women don't play men in basketball. Mm -hmm. Keep them separate. I don't think that they should miss. Mm -hmm. I bust a woman ass right today mm -hmm. at 37 with a bum knee. Come see me. I'm gonna bust your. I'll ass. show you. I put all my money on you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. but. Thinking about her in her environment, bro. I guarantee she looking at people like, yo, yo. When I was when I was down and out, you know, whenever the access I did have when I reached out, I ain't hear from you. Yeah, you know, and I'm guaranteeing there's gonna be some people in that community that she do you do working you? I, I, so. I doubt she ever probably go back. She ain't gonna never go back to Russia. What? F f what? I probably wouldn't. I'd be afraid to leave the country. But fuck Russia. <laughs> I mean, listen, I played for Ru she played for Russia for I don't know a few like some years. Mm -hmm. That was where she would go to hoop. Yeah. It's fuck everything Russian. Mm -hmm. Fuck everything that ends with a Slavic. <laughs> Slavic. <laughs> All them K's and V's at that nigga. I'm saying fuck everything Russia. Yeah. Fuck the German cars. <laughs> 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 nigga, fuck all the foreign women. Nigga, fuck everything Russia. I'm not playing with Russia no more out there. Like yeah. for me, if I'm Brittany Griner, mm -hmm. I'm staying my ass home. And then if you think about it from an NIL situation, they like NIL ain't just for high school and college people. It's mm -hmm. for anybody. It's capitalized on. Yeah. Name, image, and likeness, right? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. 
I don't even think it's going to be as important to to take her ass back to Russia because you can now start capitalizing on money here in the States. I also think, though, that the WNBA, in my opinion, has to find ways to pay these women a lot more money so that that's not a fucking situation that they have to rely on. Why would, why would they pay the women a lot more money when nobody watches the WNBA? I get it. I get it. It is, but my thing is, my thing is, if you calling yourself the WNBA mm. and you and it's a conglomerate that's partnered with the NBA, mm. I'm sure that there's an agreement that could be met to where those, those incomes, because because like Brittany Griner goes to Russia, most people go overseas, mm. they're making three times the salary. I think the average WNBA player makes what about a hundred grand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like but you got to think, WNBA goes, they go overseas to make more money. Niggas who don't cut it in the NBA go overseas to make more money. So they saying that WNBA really don't cut it. That's all they saying. So y'all go overseas and y'all go so play and make y'all money there. You think the WNBA shouldn't even be a professional league? Probably not. <laughs> they can't feel the seats. You can't feel the seats. <laughs> Nobody watch you. <laughs> Man. I know y'all gonna think I'm just bashing yeah, yeah, women yeah, and all that, but I guarantee you, I don't know no woman that watched the WNBA. Boy, hey, I <laughs> owe producer Titus gonna be so disappointed. You know you, you, know you coach a girl team right now. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, so I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have to tap Titus on the shoulder and say, man, go look at this episode. The boy's school <laughs> tripping, man. <laughs> but I also respect it because you wasn't, you wasn't traditionally no hooper to where that's a sport that you love. Mm. Right? For me, it hit different because, nigga, I've been playing ball since I was five. Right? Yeah. I know the importance of basketball. I know what it did for me in my life. I, and I understand why Brittany Griner had to chase what she was chasing. Mm. But like at, at, at a certain point when you experience certain traumas in your life, you realize what's important. Yeah. Like I guarantee you bas overseas basketball or basketball in general is not at the top of her list no more. And yeah. I think she was, Brittany Griner probably like 29, 30. I don't know. She ain't that old, right? Yeah. And and now she's already been forced to think about life outside of the WNBA. That's why I don't. That's why I don't think she's gonna be able to just jump back into this situation and just be. A f and the Phoenix went from NBA WNBA contenders to ass, nigga. Yeah. You, know, you don't follow the WNBA. Mm. I I somewhat. I yeah. just look at records and shit. Them motherfuckers is trash. What you say, John? She's thirty two. Thirty two. Yeah, she thirty two. So yeah. Brittany Grimes is thirty. So yeah, she ain't. So she, you know what I'm saying? She like in that age where it's like I'm thirty two. I'm I'm still young basically, but like. Mm. Now nah, I didn't had enough basketball experience. I need my belt and life experiences to realize this basketball shit ain't really that important in the whole scheme of what I done dealt with in my life. So, yeah. Since we since we talk about prisoners, what you think about Ti? They labeling Ti a uh, snitch for um, snitching on his cousin, his dead cousin. I, so, all right, look quick, 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 little before little before disclaimer. you before you start zoom in zoom, zoom in on light skin, John. Ti stands for. Top informant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm gonna say this really quick. I ain't never been no street nigga. I don't claim to be no street nigga. I don't come, I don't come from no, where them boys come from, right? So, but I'm about to tell you. Yeah. You asking my opinion? Mm. Bitch, I'm coming home. Oh, hell yeah. Like on, on some, and, I, and I, I do subscribe to, I 100% I agree that it's some whole shit that if you doing some fucked up shit with a nigga, Right, and mm. you choose to use they name to lighten your situation, that's a bitch move, especially if that's your partner. Yeah. We all understand. I could be a civilian and understand that snitching is whack as fuck. Mm. However, this nigga did. Yeah. And it ain't no situation where it was like he was talking about some murders. Yeah. And he was talking about uh, you know, somebody family got whacked and like, you know, there's potential to where that could be retaliated. There's none of that. Mm. Nigga, they got caught with some guns and some drugs and some bullshit, right? Mm. Partner dead now, right? Yeah. Hey, homie, you finna own all this. Oh, hell yeah. Me, per again, I ain't from the streets. Mm. I don't come from that environment, so all you internet warriors, mm. take it easy on you, boy. <laughs> but I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna go get my lawyer's advice, I'm gonna go get on my knees, and I'm gonna talk to big homie and say, hey, nigga, tomorrow morning, when the judge asks me who did this, I'm going to say talk to that man in heaven. I ain't got no answers for him. <laughs> he did everything. Yeah. I want you to know I, he might be calling on you. <laughs> I just want Boosie to keep that same energy he had for Terrence Gates to Williams for T.I. You see how Boosie's going off on Terrence Gates to Williams, how he lost all respect for, for him because he snitched on his dead homies to come home? And Boosie and T.I. are homeboys, and they got, got a joint album coming out. Keep that same energy you had for that nigga for T.I. 
Mm. The Gangster Williams situation is a little is a little different though. How? Because there could be retaliation. Wow. Like when you come out and be and start snitching on dead homies that happen, but dead is dead. Mm. But now you're telling about yeah, my dead homie did this killing and that killing and that killing. Mm. And so now there's ties to where the other side can re- retaliate. I'm not saying. That he ain't that he wrong again. I'm a civilian, bitch. I'm coming home if the nigga if my if the nigga who was co conspiring against me is in, is locked up. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, not locked up. He's dead yeah. in the ground. I got shit to tell. Yeah, yeah. You know you be in class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> like, don't be me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a civilian though. Yeah. You feel me? I don't live that street life. Mm. No, I ain't never did none of that bullshit. Yeah. But I also like what's good for the goose is good for the gander. And so like I was going. I'm glad you brought it up because I was gonna take you there. I was gonna mm. ask you, do you compare the two and are they equal? Yeah. My I my only difference is that there, I could potentially see retaliation from the Terrence side of things, but I also understand, like, bro, I got an opportunity to come home when y'all got me locked up for life. Yeah. Man, let me give you whatever the fuck you need to hear. Yeah, because that nigga Anybody did. Anybody else going to jail behind this shit, I'm finna tell you. Yeah, that nigga did 20 flat. Yeah, he, and he did 20, mm. I mean, he had life, right? Mm. Oh. How you, how you tell a lifer, I got this I got this lifeline here. All you got to do is reach for it. But mm. in order for you to extend your arms, I need information. Yeah. I guarantee you, any one of them rappers that will be in that same situation, with, they going to tell. I don't care album? if it was Boosie. I don't care if it's T.I., Webby, Jeezy, any of them big time gangsters. And they did 20 flat, they going to tell on their dead homie. Mm. You know what I respected about Tip, though? Mm. The same as Terrence. It's like... It's like it came from Tip. Yeah. Like Tip came out, he was Tip came out on his show and said this. Mm-hmm. Tip was like, I ain't never been in no paperwork and he said, I'm lying. And got this one hand, and he was like, I'm, I'm telling y'all for free. But it wasn't even pertaining to the what he was trying to talk about in that interview, if, mm-hmm. if y'all saw the interview. But it was like, hey, this is, so even Tip looking at that, like, I ain't did shit wrong, nigga. These some guns. My nigga can eat this charge. It ain't finna be nothing else that's coming behind this. Mm-hmm. However, I'll say this, I could also look at somebody who made, because there's really people out there who lives and breathes and dies this no snitch, snitch culture to mm-hmm. the letter of the T of the law, whatever yep. you call it, right? I can also see them looking at it like, all right, well, if you willing to tell that, what what will it take for you to crack to get something else out of you, right? Oh, yeah. Because it's, like, it's almost like, you know how whenever a windshield, like a, a, a rock hits your windshield and it got the little small crack? Mm. And it's like, oh, let me go get this shit plugged because I know eventually that bitch gonna spread. Mm. How much pressure you need to, you know, spread? Yeah. I think people who really live that snitch culture is looking at it the exact same way. What are, what other pressure need to be applied for you to start singing some more shit? Yeah, because I guarantee you, that, see, I gonna lose some friends. I guarantee so, you, Boosie ain't gonna fuck with them no more. Cause Boosie is one of them that they live by. I that think, knows. I, Boosie, I do not think Boosie is telling on nothing. Yeah. Boosie, Boosie ain't got no information for you. Mm. Like. And but I also think that Boosie is a part of a dying culture. Mm. Like Boosie is standing ten toes, and he ain't got too many soldiers behind who him who gonna rock like he rocking, mm. and that's a dangerous place to be. Mm. Right? You could be the realest of the realest, but when 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 the opposition has more people on their side, I don't give a fuck how real you are. You can still look weak. Yeah. So I get. I, I think I just want to see if he gonna drop that joint album now. I'm telling you. You you know who gonna be the first messy person to have Boosie speak on it? Vag. Oh, Vag definitely gonna ask. Vag, oh, Vag, Vag got a goddamn interview set with Boosie right now. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> if I'm Boosie, I'm like, bro, I, I'm telling you now, I'm collecting my check with Tip, mm. especially the way Bo- Boosie music been going for a little minute. Yeah. Like you need that moment to like you need that that moment to have people ear mm. and to show people, yo, I'm, I really can snap, just like he did on Rocket Man. Mm. He snapped. But I don't know if enough people listening. Mm-hmm. So if I if I if Vlad reaching out to me and I and I I, I know Boosie then heard like he, that nigga online all the time. I know he heard what the fuck Tip said. Oh yeah. I'm like Vlad, you gotta <laughs> let this album you gotta let this album run go, go first before mm-hmm. I do another interview. Yeah. Because I ain't gonna lie to you about how I feel, mm-hmm. but I also ain't finna contradict my bag by speaking on some shit where I'm going against everything that the nigga I'm doing the album with. Mm-hmm. See. Yeah. Since we since we still on the topic of 
prisoners and informers and all that. How you feel about R. Kelly dropping that, <laughs> yeah, right, that, new, that new album? Hey, my nigga. hey, I don't know what it is, but it's some jail culture going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I might go make a spray when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> a little ramen, a little nacho cheese, <laughs> some weed. tuna, the and some tuna. <laughs> you got to cut the mask of my wings up, bro. Put it in there, son. Hey, yeah. we were, I, I believe, sidebar before I answer your question, I believe a lot of the hood meals that we grew up on for, right? Yeah. The bologna sandwich, the fried grilled cheese bologna sandwiches, right? Mm. With the mayonnaise on the outside and the butter and you and you and you cook it so it can so it can harden up. Yeah. You don't know about that hack. You want a crisp ass grilled cheese, spread some mayonnaise on the outside where you you cooking it at. Mm. Get it. But I think a lot of these rituals, Cheetos and the noodles, you know. That shit, our, our people came from jail mm. and just was cooking that for, the, for us as kids and we were just eating that shit. <laughs> I'm yeah. convinced. But you, are, are you just a poor nigga and you had to come and up with ways? Figure it out. Cause I used to, when my mama really had a nigga, I used to eat them fucking, uh, you know, like uh, white sugar mm. that's in the bag. Yeah. So I'd toast some bread. I ain't know how to make cinnamon toast. So I toast some bread, nigga, right? And then spray some butter on there, let the butter melt. Then I sprinkle some sugar on that thing. Mm. Then I I do some syrup, like the ancient mama syrup. Mm. I, I closed that bit, nigga, had me a French toast sandwich. Yeah. You bet. You know. You know how I, I know I didn't. I didn't do the regular nigga struggles when I was a kid. I ain't eat my first pack of ramen until I was in my twenties. <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't like, I, I ain't know how to cook that hey, bitch or nothing. I'm gonna keep it a bean with y'all. This is my partner. And I know, you know, that my nigga got both his parents in his house. And I knew he was like a little better than us. But bitch, I ain't know you were that better. <laughs> <laughs> no, this nigga said he didn't have no noodles when he was 20. So I thought that was my first meal when I had teeth. Nigga, what the fuck you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? The rich ass nigga over there, man. You don't hear speak. You know, broke people problems, <laughs> When Nick coming back? <laughs> now, when you get to the R. Kelly shit, bro, like, man, listen, I didn't know he was dropping or nothing. Nigga, my mm -hmm. eyes lit up when I went to the browse on Apple Music. Yeah. And I was like, I'm like, nigga, I know I'm not reading this fucking shit right. Yeah. That's why I sent it to y'all. Mm. When you when you sent it, I thought it was like a fake old mixtape. No, nah, and I went, I right, boy, I looked at that bitch and I saw the, the track list and I saw I admit it. Yeah. I said, man, I want to go straight to the my admittance. I said, but I want, I want, you know, I love listening to, I love my first, my first listen on the album is going to always be chronologically because I just want to see where the, where the artist is musically. Mm. I, I kind of see where the, you know, where the started, where the where the start of the conversation is. You know what I'm saying what stories you telling in, and then where you evolved to by the end of it, right? Mm. And so, like by the time they pulled the bitch off of Apple, I made it. I made it through the album. I was only I admit it too, but yeah. I was halfway through. Luckily for y'all, I found it on YouTube and finished listening to it this morning. Yeah. But that nigga is speaking. Yeah. Do you think? I wonder if he gonna drop videos for it. You remember? Remember when he dropped uh out the closet? With the little mini series the, the high videos, video though, bro, he locked up. But he dropped that album before he was locked up. You, you I, like, uh, like you hear them songs. He was saying he not convicted or nothing. Uh, he had, he had to record that way before he was locked up. I don't think he got no. You think he got some videos stashed? I don't know. He might. That nigga might. But he might have thought it all through. With you. If he do, mm. you ain't gonna find it. No oh no, it ain't gonna. It, it, it ain't gonna be nothing that show him doing that. That he got convicted for. I guarantee you. But to, to answer your question. I ain't mad at the album, mm. and let me tell you why. And, and y'all can hate, y'all can hate it all y'all want, and say what you want. My thing is, he's convicted for his crime, and he's serving his time. Yeah. Right. At the end of the day, that's that they they prosecuted him to the letter of the law, and then they gave him everything that they can give him. Mm. So just like a nigga can go to prison and, and cook and bust tables and make a little change, mm. that nigga can make his. That's what he do. Yeah. So I'm not mad at him, and I'm not mad at the listeners either. Like just like anybody else, Hugh Hefner had coat followers, um, Upstein had coat followers. What's mm. that motherfucker that that's crazy? That's a radio host, the white dude, um, Howard. Howard Stern. Howard yeah. Stern got his. Like, all these people just Kanye West got his coat. Like mm. everybody got their coat followers who gonna fuck with who. Mm. Do you do you think me? I needed to find the songs that was gonna be able. I was gonna be able to relate to when I'm kicking it with. Some of the women who don't mind me playing a little kid. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think it was right that they took it down? Down. Well, what about what about there's, free there's, speech, there's man? There's a lot of trauma that comes behind R. Kelly's situation. So mm -hmm. I'm absolutely not mad at 
the, the business decision that needed to be made for that. Mm. Because if you think about it from a business standpoint, you keeping it all Kelly up. That any, anybody can easily be like, oh Apple, that's what you want. You mm. this is a council culture, bro. Yeah. Oh Apple, that's what you want. Fuck you. Yeah. They but they they but they they take R. Kelly down, but we got all these rappers talking about killing and shooting twenty four seven. I swear to God. And they won't take that down though. Right. <laughs> no bullshit. Mm. That's how I know you, homie. Mm. When I listen to him, I say the first thing Jeremy gonna want to compare this to is the goddamn shoot my bang. <laughs> I said that shit yesterday. I said, so let me prepare myself. For that shit. I know he gonna point it out. I don't agree. It's the same thing. Yeah. Like, no, it's, it's not the same I mean, thing. I mean, I don't, but I don't, I don't, I don't think that storytelling is one thing. Mm. Whenever artists are doing that and they're telling their stories, we can't, we can't point no fact or fiction on that. It's just a dope ass story that we can tell, mm. unless there's evidence. Like Fifty Cent, he got shot nine mm. times. We know that. Mm. There's documents. There's paperwork behind it. All that, right? Yeah. So we're not tripping on that. I'm talking about the, the casual shoot 'em up. The NBA. I don't believe NBA young boy. At this point, he'd probably murdered about a million people if you go off his music. Mm. I don't believe that. 4K Trey, who gonna die today? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he, but he gonna rap about it. Mm. R. Kelly has documentation in place showing that, hey, we are convicting you because there's enough evidence to prove that you've done X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And even when the nigga, now this is what, I'm, this is what had me laughing. When, he, mm. when you get to I admit it three, mm. gotta get to I admit it three. The nigga say, <laughs> the nigga go say, he done done some shit with some women that ain't even that ain't good enough for the radio waves. Mm. You nasty bitch. <laughs> you, if you can't tell me what happened on the radio, you was probably in, you probably did some of the shit they talked yeah. about. Let me ask you this: If Young Thug and YSL gets convicted for all their crimes, should they take Young Thug and YSL music all down? Fuck! I hate you for that question. <laughs> nah. Why not? not? Why not? It's the same thing as R. Kelly. No, because <laughs> I plead the fifth. I should have been in the goddamn <laughs> debate. I should have been on a debate team. Marks with high, goddamn it. <laughs> no, but that was a question because it's like I, I, in my in my head right now, there was no way I could answer that question without contradicting what I was just saying about R. Kelly. Mm. So I get what you're saying. My point is, is that. There's the simple sensory advisory thing that goes on to the the, the music industry, right? Mm. Which means that hey, listen at your own risk. I think the taking down of R. Kelly's music isn't in, is not about particularly what he's saying on that album. It's more so about the trauma that's going to be caused from people seeing his, like the victim seeing his name, seeing his content, seeing him making money mm. off of traumas that they went through. Yeah. There's like, I don't know if YSL and all them getting convicted if that's really caused trauma, because that's blood on both sides, that street shit. They, they, there's gonna be murders after the YSL thing. Mm. Again, if if allegedly, if all that shit's true, because I ain't trying to incriminate nobody, I ain't looked into that story enough yet. Mm. So I do look at it different. Like when, when, when there's victims' faces that you can pinpoint to, and then there's, they got parents that support them and all this shit. Like I can see that that trauma is, is a lot worse than what a YSL case will look or look like because that's just, and it's sad to say, but that's just like, you know, that's beef in the streets. Mm. Like that's that's our culture. That's been our culture since hip hop was created back in the set, late seventies. Like that's the culture. They didn't rap about no gangster shit in the seventies, man. In the eighties they did when in the- Yeah, the crack, right? yeah, yeah. But, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Mm. So in the ladies, the mm. hip hop came out in 78. Mm. We started talking about punching niggas in their shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, gave, we gave MC Hammer two years. Yeah. <laughs> All these bag ass pants and these dance moves ain't yeah. cutting it, homie. <laughs> That's a, uh, some gangster shit. Yeah, so I, I don't look at it the same, bro. Yeah. But I, I do think that, like, so I'll say this about our Kelly. Support which at this point, like I say, he's serving his crime. Mm. He's doing his time. Support what you want to support now. Mm. And if you choose to be like, I'm off that shit. Be off it, mm. but don't be don't be mad at somebody who genuinely enjoys artistry from somebody who may not be uh, a liking to, who may be a sick person in here. Because I guarantee you, if you look at a lot of these successful people who made it to where R. Kelly's legendary status is in whatever industry they're in, mm. I guarantee you, that's their skeletons in their closet. Yeah, let's get off the uh, the prison. prisoners. Tell me yeah. what you know. What about Laura Harvey, man? My ba my baby. Yeah, hey, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I'm I'm gonna keep it a bean with you. Mm. 
And this ain't coming from no hating place. I mm. done, I done sung Laura Harvey praises many a times on this show. You know that. Mm. But I'm I'm convinced that she she moving more. So have you you haven't seen the Laura Harvey shit, right? No. Just for you and the listeners, I'm gonna catch you up. So like she's now in a place, right? To where and that's the question I'm gonna have for you. Like, so to fuck with her now, right? Mm. Just to put quit it dry, like you gotta sign an NDA. Yeah. And right, and 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 if you go against that NDA and break that NDA contract in any way, allegedly, there's a one million dollar penalty penalty that comes with that. But do we know what the actual NDA says? No, I haven't found it. I literally mm. just saw this yesterday. So, but I'm bringing it to you because I wanted to. In my mind, it's like a lot of people be like, you know, she's she a celebrity. She's she a celebrity. Excuse me. Mm. So, you know, of course, that's that's standard for celebrity status. Yeah. Like the way. I look at it as like, it's like she the closest thing to like how women look at us from a like future and Drake standpoint. Mm. Like Laura Harvey tiptoeing on that lane for women. Yeah. And she doing it in a boss way though. Like what I respect about her is she classy as fuck. Mm. So you ain't you don't see too many ass shots. You don't see no goddamn limp enhancement. She's just a naturally beautiful lady mm. who's doing what she want to do because she's young. And she like, oh, this is the game? Mm. Bet. Let me put my own rules to it. But I'm convinced now that she absolutely is in that caliber of like the futures and the rest of the motherfuckers that we get looked down upon mm. for fucking with. Man, forget Laura Harvey, man. I don't like what she did to my nigga Michael B. Jordan. No, no, no. <laughs> AKA Creed. <laughs> so Michael B. Jordan ain't no simp for going to marry her? Nah, I mean, now, he, brother, you better not call my dog no nah, simp. Yeah, no, he ain't I no had simp, to nigga. Water with you. I've been watching that nigga since he was on the wire. Mm-mm. I've been watching that nigga. See, you ain't been watching him long enough. What I've been was watching on? that nigga since Hardball. He's on Hardball? What you be- John, yeah. <laughs> the only nigga I remember on Hardball is goddamn. G-Baby. G-Baby. He the real one. G-Baby was the, he was the real one in the Hardball. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, he was the... Yeah, he was the he was the um a hardball Michael B. Jordan with the kid that was too old to play, remember? Oh, that's what I don't remember. Yeah. He wasn't actually on the team. Nah, but you remember, um, he was he was G Baby's brother, right? Cause he the one found G Baby dead whenever they were walking. Oh, home. okay. Yeah. Yeah, G Baby mm-hmm. got shot. He was like, Come on, G Baby, let's go. And then the G Baby sitting there with the bullet in him mm-hmm. and like he like trying to talk to G Baby. That, that yeah. Michael B. Jordan. No. See, you ain't been on him long enough. Bro, I ain't watched that shit for so long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm feeling you. So yeah. but like like the thing that I want to like, I want to bring home with with this situation is that I think it's smart for her, mm. I honestly, because now, uh, and like, I, like I'm at first I started off by like you know, it wasn't a joke I was dead serious, but like I was comparing her to the futures and the Drakes and them, but and, and saying she in that caliber. But what I'm getting at is that like, like you get to a point where you tired of people being in your fucking business, mm. and you get to a point and you like how the fuck I'm doing everything that I need to do to make sure that my business don't get out like that, why does shit keep getting leaked, right? Mm. And you're not gonna stop everything from getting leaked and getting out, but I guarantee you, NDA gonna make you think. Oh yeah, I bet you, I bet you she got it in there that they, they, you can't talk about their relation, that their that. relationship, we can't take no pictures together, none of that none shit. None of that, mm. unless, unless it's some shit that I allow, like mm. you gotta get it okay through me. Mm. I gotta be okay with you posting it, I gotta be okay with you speaking on it, I gotta be okay with you everything in it, right? Mm. And from that standpoint, I ain't mad at shorty, because at the end of the day, it's like, bro, this, this whole internet culture shit that we got going on now, mm. like this whole little, thing that we do with like exposing people and be, wanting to be the first to report shit. Nigga, we all fall, fall, we got a podcast, we fall, a lot of people fall guilty of that shit. Mm. Like it is up to the celebrity to protect themselves. Yeah. And we can't get mad at celebrities for finding protection. She probably, uh, what I was gonna say, she know how Future never, never admit to be in a relationship with no woman. Yeah. That's how she gonna be now from now on, I guarantee you. I ain't talking about shit. Until she gonna tell she get married or something like that. You boom. You you see Laura Harvey in camp and she she hit you with the come over, come come join the section. Mm. And all this you know about her now. Yeah. You shooting your shot? Fuck yeah. <laughs> you signing the NDA? Oh no, I wanna go viral. <laughs> this could this could this could boost with the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's a snake. That's it, your snake. <laughs> that nigga snake. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it a bean with you, nigga. I'm signing the NDA so quick. Yeah. Cause nigga, 
I don't give a fuck about talking to the public. Mm. I just want to sit in the car with my partners. Yeah. Me, you, Nick, TJ, Oga, all nigga. Nigga, guess who I fuck? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we don't do it too often. Yeah. When there's some new shit, we're sitting in the thumbs up or something. You know, because yeah, it's corny. I'm going to be right here. First of all, I say, men, it's super corny to just be bragging. And we too old for that. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a little homie. <laughs> we'll tap back into my 21 year old self for a few minutes. But yeah. it ain't gonna leave our circle. Like, mm. I know I got a solid enough friend group to where that, like, we gonna clap for each other mm. in the group, and that's it. But, I'm signing but, but Lil Harvey, I guarantee that's gonna leak. I'm signing at NDA. Yeah. But even in even our group, I guarantee <laughs> that shit gonna leak. Lil Harvey, <laughs> that, uh, somebody gonna tell. Is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who gonna be the snitch. It gonna be somebody. Lil Vaughn. I tell you right now, who's telling? Oh, you need to get drunk enough. Oh yeah. Oh, you want my nigga fucking Lord? <laughs> <laughs> my nigga fucking Lord. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually no even be about Lord. Mm -hmm. So what you got your baby girl for Christmas? Man, my nigga fucking Lord. <laughs> <laughs> niggas, gonna, <laughs> niggas be like, nigga, you ain't take no pictures. Yeah. Nope. I ain't take no pictures. I ain't cheat, nigga. I want to show y'all this NDA contract. Yeah. This is what I signed, and this is what I got to follow. Mm. And now I need y'all to follow these. That'll be me. I'm mm. going to show y'all the contract and say, we are one, nigga. Yeah. We talk about living vicariously through each other all the time. Mm. But this is an opportunity for y'all to stand on it. <laughs> so shit get leaked, and I get cost a million dollars. You goddamn right. I'm in the text group. Hey, man, I got to pay Laurie a million in installments. Who helping? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck helping? <laughs> Since y'all can't hold fucking water. <laughs> yeah. but, but like, hey, like the crazy thing, and then, you know, before I went, I'm going to get to my, my point that I wanted to holler at you about. Like the crazy thing is like what I'm starting to learn about like this celebrity space. Just think about it, right? The Britney Griner shit, the T.I. Snitcher shit, the R. Kelly shit. You know, and then the Lord Harvey shits to a to a lesser degree, but same. Like you starting to realize that, like, bro, these these people think, live, breathe, and operate similar to me and you. Mm. Like, we at the end of the day, we just we just want we just want to be in a space where we can live freely with no judgment and and have opportunities to kind of make our mistakes and learn from them. And like when you look at all the Britney Griner got arrested for weed. Mm -hmm. That could have been me. You don't really smoke like that, but let's mm -hmm. just say, you know, you had a time and, you know, you did smoke and it's like, oh, anything else illegal. Your ex pill run. Mm -hmm. Fuck around and have one pill sitting in your bag one time. Yeah. Could have been you, right? Never, yeah. never, never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, a, a lesser nigga can make that mistake. T.I. Mm -hmm. wanted to get, get out of a situation and it's like, bro, I don't see no harm in the same thing. R. Kelly, <sighs> We we'll gonna skip over that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Harvey with the NDA wanting to, you know, keep our life private. I'm mm. realizing over and over and over again that, like, bro, the more I dig into this this lifestyle that we living with the podcast, the more I'm realizing that man, these is regular ass people just like us mm. trying to keep everyday people just like us out of their fucking business. Yeah. And I do it all day, every day. Mm. Which leads me to like my topic that I wanted to kind of talk to you about, just in terms of like. You know, you see this whole culture of privacy versus public, right? And so, like, when you in your situations or thinking about it, and we kind of alluded to it in, in other episodes, but not in the way I'm finna talk about it now. Like, like, what constitutes for you, you know, keeping shit private now? Is it mm -hmm. just as like, yo, I'm 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 an older man now, and I ain't really. Like social media, some shit that like that's some kid shit now. So I ain't really got no no news to give y'all. Or are you just selective and keeping your shit private and you gonna give people what you want? Do you think it's like some young shit that people are doing? Or? Yeah, at, at this age, I, I see I'm more private. I made I made like all my social media private. Oh, so so nobody can follow you without you without you accepting. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I like I, I like my circle like of people. I'm involved with now. Mm -hmm. Like if any outsiders, like you got, I got to see the request. To see. I, I don't want no, no outsiders, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess even when I was younger, I really didn't care. You know, I put all that shit out there, but now as I'm more, uh, I, like, you know, I'm a loner. Yeah. So I guess that's the shit. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, like, for me, it's like, I can remember growing up and bef before, Social media was a thing, and like we gon' we gonna age ourselves right here. So y'all come along this ride real quick. Mm. But before social media was a thing, because I, Facebook wasn't created until 
my freshman year in college. So you know, you know when like a lot of people be talking about, man, I ain't have Facebook to like 08, 09 and all this shit. Mm -hmm. But that's that's when you was able to get on Facebook with a regular email address. A lot of people don't know that when Facebook first came out, which was which was the very first popping one. Mm -hmm. I know MySpace and Black Planet it, it exists before that, but I'm talking about the one that took off. Yeah. Facebook was the first, right? And bef before you could even get an account, you had to have a college ed uh, a college um, email address. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing you could sign up with yeah. because it was for college students. Started at Harvard and then circulated around the colleges and then blew up to something else, right? Mm -hmm. So I come from that era to where even when Facebook was starting to take off, it wasn't no means to push it online. And what it allowed us to do is move way more freely. You know why? Because it was just a conversation the next day. Mm. I mean, you saw that crazy ass nigga came last night, nigga was standing on the pool table last night going crazy. And, you know, it was just, and it was just a memory that you can just imagine. Mm. Like I specifically remember like when IG and all these and, and Snap and all this shit started taking off and like people was like getting more and more used to being on camera and exposing themselves to the world. I then just naturally took myself in mm. and I've always been like a show people who I am person until that shit happened and I'll tell you why it's because it's like all you saw immediately you saw how you saw how messy the world really is yeah like as soon as viral was a thing going viral was all negative shit mm. exposed you know whether it was a chick exposing some text messages or some conversations about a nigga cheating or if it was a scandal in, in you know, celebrity news or whatever it was, mm. viral became a thing and people started chasing them moments. Yeah, yeah. For, for, for me, privacy is all about, bro, I, I need something to have for me. Yeah. Like I need something to walk around that y'all don't know about. And I don't mm. think enough people have that mindset. Yeah, that's why, that's why I made my shit private. I only want people to see what I'm involved with in my life that's in my life. Yeah. But but the thing is, social media is a business now. Mm. So how do you how do you expect to make money on a business if you ain't giving if you ain't feeding the content? Yeah, but you can take your. I'm talking about my personal okay. account. Yeah, yeah. So I, I like we got our own personal podcast. We got two of them. Right. And that's all open. Yeah, that's open. So we can you can separate your own personal life from your podcast. That's true. I mm. mean, but I, so for us. But for us, when you think about the podcast, it's all podcast content. Mm. I'm thinking about those people who reinvent themselves and create these characters. How many times you've seen a person, even people that we know, I guarantee you there's at least one person you know right now mm. that acts a certain way online, but in your head you like, this nigga do not live like that in real life. Yeah. I know a few people, mm. but it's a business, mm. right? And like, and I think social media now forces us to make that business decision a lot more than what we necessarily had to. I'm not mad at it because there's a strong way to make millions off this shit. Yeah, people, people on social media up their sales more than they are, cause, I, cause, yeah, cause everybody posts their good times. The highlight. Nobody right. posts when they when they down and out. We so, just got a new trend, bro. Yeah, you post yourself when you don't have a haircut. It, it, uh, I've done it before. Yeah. You don't, but I've done it. <laughs> yeah. But it'd be quick, yeah. but I do it. Mm. But I'm about to just start, I'm about to start a whole trend, nigga. Like, mm. when I be like, sometimes like when I'm in the crib, mm. not a lot, but like the next time, I don't know when it's gonna happen. Next time I just need to cry, mm. I'm gonna turn my camera on. Please do it. Fuck it. Please just, do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna start crying in the camera. I wanna see if I should take off. Bro. <laughs> and if y'all call me a sip fan, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna take off, all right? It's gonna take off, all right? Wait till you read them comments. But but that's that's what I don't understand. I don't understand like why that's frowned upon. Crying? Well, not just the crying, but mm. being emotional. Mm. Like, let's say you an emotional person online, and you like, you really that's just really who you are. Mm. Like that shit is frowned upon. I think I think crying along lines should be frowned upon. But, but, if, but then but then you can come out and post a video of a dude getting punched in the face by another dude who's clearly at an advantage, right? Mm -hmm. You can see this big ass nigga beating up on this little dude mm -hmm. and it's just it's applauded or it's funny or it's laughed at. Mm -hmm. I just think I think and it's nothing to do with social media at that point. I just think morally we some fucked up individuals. Yeah. Right? You know, you know what's getting on my nerves, the goddamn Workout influencers that be posting their dumb ass workouts. Oh, with the fucking couch. We are the couch on their bag with the, the nigga jumping from doing pull ups and fitting the flow, doing all that jumping shit. I'm like, bro, y'all do anything <laughs> to go viral. Cloud, cloud is a cloud is a business. Yeah, like that. That's that's a real thing. Like mm. to chase cloud is to chase currency now. Mm. 
because all of it's tied together. If you can, if you can get yourself to a certain point to where you can get certain view, I mean, certain followers or subscribers, whatever platform you're using, right? Mm. And and from those followers and subscribers, you can then get people to view, and then after they view, you can uh, then you can get the motherfuckers to click. Mm like and then state that they comment and did give a reaction on it mm. there's advertising dollars that's directed right to that and then when mm. you when you get your first thousand subscribers on youtube and then you got your four your first four thousand watch hours i'm giving y'all a free game unless y'all I mean, if y'all trying to learn how to get monetized right mm. if you getting all that and then boom youtube send you a check let's say it might not be big though it might be let's say that check like five hundred dollars mm. right and, but it's just off of that quick success. Mm. You are gonna instantly say, "Well, shit! If I got a thousand, yeah, man, what what this check gonna look like if I get to a hundred thousand? Yeah, yeah. What this check gonna look like if I get to two million? Like mm. it entices you to continue to chase that shit. Yeah. It's a rat race, and like you have to have discernment on what you want to feed people based on you know how you want to be perceived in the world because the social media ain't going nowhere. Like it's gonna be here to stay. Niggas gonna chase clout. Niggas gonna do all that." extra shit to get paid off of it. I just say that in the midst of doing all that, mm. you gotta learn to keep your sanity and your peace of mind and your integrity. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, like everything in social media is shock value. Like, if you got a YouTube page or any kind of like following, all you gotta do is say something shocking and that bitch gonna blow up. That shit gonna go. Cause like our short I, I uploaded yesterday, all I said was, Kanye broke bro code. <laughs> Foo, that bitch flew. I like, God damn, I ain't even say hey, that important. Speaking of real quick, are you sip ass niggas in the comments? Sip ass niggas. Talking about how you go against Kanye and that was his wife. Newsflash, my nigga, they divorced. Yeah. So I'm not arguing the fact that he had, he had a wife. I'm arguing the fact that Chris Paul and that situation, if it's true, allegedly, because you know, this nigga just mentioned some shit. We don't know the full facts. Mm. I've, I've heard Chris Paul and, and Kim speak against it at this point. But mm. if it's true, right? My point is like, you're, you're creating chaos for somebody else's life based on the way you're getting treated by people who has nothing to do with the situation you talking about. Yeah. To me, that's a whole ass move. Yeah. That, that is along the lines of snitching. Yeah. And then you jump in the motherfucking thing and applaud snitching because it's his ex-wife. No, nigga, stop tattletelling. Yeah, yeah. You know, whole ass nigga, if you saw Chris Paul clapping them cheeks, you take that shit. First of all, I ain't trying to be embarrassed like yeah. that. Hell no, I'm not, about, <laughs> I'm not about to embarrass myself. You know what I'm saying? I'm and, not giving niggas that, that fucking that opportunity to mm, shit on me. Yeah, since we, since we talking about simp ass nigga, it's time for sip, sip of the week. week. <laughs> it's sip, sip of the week. week. <laughs> it's sip of the week. You ain't no pimp nigga, you a simp nigga. <laughs> <laughs> and this week, sip of the week is the Phoenix Suns for getting pissed off and wanting to fight the Pelicans for Zion doing that dunk at the end of regulation. So, okay, at this Listen. point, sip of the week could be any any whole ass move. Right? Any whole ass nigga to do something stupid. Yeah. Shout out, yeah. Hey, shout out to the Pelicans really quickly because they real life, they own a fucking tear. Mm. But do you know the backstory of why Zion was like that hype about it? Yeah, he said, the, like, the sun, didn't the Suns like the Pelicans out last yeah, year? Yeah, and they were talking shit. Yeah. So then that's, that's for me, I'm, I'm cool with that. As a person who played ball before, mm. and been playing it the majority of my life still to this point, I haven't even reached the halfway point to where I was hooping. Mm. So I stopped hooping at 20 something. Um, bro, like, all this fair and loving war. Mm. Like, if, if, if y'all gonna kick our ass in the playoffs, kick us off the court and have all this trash shit to talk and have all this shit to speak on, Yo, when I see you again, it ain't shit sweet. Mm. I, don't give, I don't give a fuck if that clock said point zero five seconds. Yeah. Bitch, throw the alley. Yeah. <laughs> throw it up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm punching that hole. Because yeah, yeah. I want you to go home and be upset just as much as y'all did. Because I, I would rather, I guarantee you, Zion will give that dunk back any day of the week to beat them niggas in the playoffs. Hell yeah. yeah. You, know, you, know, you know what's so scary about it? None of them niggas went up to Zion. But you see how big that big yeah. nigga is? None of them niggas went up to Zion and big ass. Who the fuck walking through that nigga, that nigga, that nigga? That nigga make a fist and that bitch look like he already got on a glove. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that bitch big. Yeah. I, and I ain't going to lie to you, when I look at Zion, you know how you could, I look at, you know who I look at Zion like? And y'all don't shun me for this. This is just how I view it, not knowing the, the young man. Yeah. You remember the nigga, the big nigga who used to always get his ass whooped, played, uh, played, uh, on the green my coffee. John, John Coffee, yeah, yeah. That's how I look at Zion. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like mm. I look at him like a big, ox strong ass nigga. Mm. That ain't really ain't ain't by busting no grape or nothing. Mm. I'm, I'm just a big nigga with all the 
all this extra shit. Yeah. However, I wouldn't want to be the nigga to walk up to him and and Jordan pool him. Yeah. But it, nigga it, might nigga might just have some Draymond in it. Yeah. If it, <laughs> <laughs> nigga might just have some Draymond in it. <laughs> if you if you if you mad and nigga did a 360 dunk at the end of regulation, nigga, you go up to Zion. Yeah. Don't go up and fight the other teammates. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Hey, if I was Chris Paul, nigga, I'd have threw a basketball at that nigga and ran to my locker room. <laughs> nah, if I was Chris Paul, I'd have just walked off. Like, you already in the headlines, nigga. Don't do nothing else extra. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. right. That's who face they show. Yeah, yeah. I would just duck it, nigga. If I was Chris Paul, I'd take my shirt. I, I'm hooping with the little, with the black um nose man. The Horace Grant? <laughs> Not the Horace Grant. I'm changing it up, man. Yeah. What you got for bro talk? I got no bro talk. Oh yeah, I man. forgot you He's... did your simple the week. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey man, bro talk. Hey, bro talk for today is gonna be real simple, bro. Um, it's the holiday season, and just like I alluded to uh, a couple episodes ago, if you ain't got the money to pay for no gifts, go single. <laughs> break break go it off single. now, my nigga. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now, cause cause listen. Ain't nothing worse than showing up with a gift and you gotta explain yourself and you hit him with this line. Man, I thought it was the thought that count. Ain't no woman want to hear if the thought that counted on Christmas. What? <laughs> you fuck around and show up with some sock. You you give you, you give a woman a gift like they give us the relationship over with anyway, homie. Yeah, yeah. So if you ain't got it, let the shit go, big dog. <laughs> hey, listen, man, it's another fun step episode with Certified Steppers Podcast. I am KP, a.k.a. Big Dude. That is my homie, Jeremy. You say you want me, but he needs you, baby. Tell me. Smoothie King, a.k.a. R. Kelly. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to see you on the other side. Yeah. <laughs>